Hi, welcome to part two of the Z-Tool Touch Pro build. This is the final version right here. And I am going to test it today and show you the results. In addition, I'd like to show you that I have some drawings for you as well. You can download on my webpage. And I made uh, several of these and I'd like to say thank you if you ordered one. There were so many people that reached out and wanted um, a unit or a probe actually that I decided to manufacture a batch of them and they are for sale on my webpage. Now, this one has the optical sensors, the Panasonic optical sensors that uh, you saw me test already in the prototype. However, I made yet an upgraded version. <laughs> this here is a little uh, piece of awesomeness. It's all stainless steel. It has a hardened shaft. It has the bushings that I showed you last time but it has the high precision metrol switch in that can sense or uh, has a repeatability under one micrometer. So I'm gonna test this guy today as well and let's see how we do. There are a couple of things I learned building these and using them. And one of them is that the bottom uh, would need to be made from steel. These, this one here is a prototype, it has a aluminum bottom and what happened is that it catches dings and nicks just floating around your shop and ultimately that ding will tilt the probe and tilt the touch plate and that will make a difference in your readings. So there are two things that I did to avoid that. One is I gave the final version an aluminum housing but a stainless steel bottom. That stainless steel bottom doesn't scratch as easy. And the other change I made is that the diameter of the tool sensing plate is much smaller on the final version so that you are forced to go to the center of the probe um, so that the tilting is not amplified. Before we go into the testing, I have one more tip for you. If you buy a probe, then make sure that you know how to integrate it into your machine, not necessarily with the cable connections, but on the software side of things. You need a macro to run and to use it or uh, a plug-in or some type of software that is for your machine, specific for your machine. So make sure that that is present and that you have that and you know how to use it uh, or how to get it integrated into, into your system before you purchase one. This is the adding CNC screen. On the top right hand side you see the cursor in the blue field that is the work coordinate system. X, Y and Z I have set to zero. And Z of course is of importance right now. The first button on the bottom left right there says probe tool. And it will execute a macro and that will actually apply an offset to the tool length that is reported right now there in the screen with 39.188. Before the measurement, it always wants to have an estimated tool length. So I have type in 35 millimeter. Probe comes down, touches, and goes back up, and then reports the delta. And in this case, it's zero, and we still have a tool length of 39.188. So when I do that again, I have to type in 35 again, and now the reading comes to minus 2,000, so my, minus 2 microns. Okay, so I'd like to show you that we do really measure an offset here or measure a value. And what I'm going to do next is I'm just going to put a piece of aluminum foil in between the tool and the touch plate. And then we should be able to measure the thickness of the aluminum. So let's do just that. Execute the macro. Type in an estimated length of 35. Tool comes down and we see 15 microns. So one and a half hundredths of a millimeter is the thickness of the aluminum foil. Go back to the next reading and we are at two microns. So now it's just uh, doing more of the same thing and uh, putting a chart together to chart the values. And that is what you see here. The maximum that I saw from zero was uh, minus five microns and plus two microns. So for a total span of seven microns. That changed quite a bit with the metrol version that you see here. That actually came in, I think, with every single reading of zero. So my machine cannot measure a tool, um, uh, an offset difference 
or a variation. One more time to prove that we are actually measuring something here, I put on the aluminum foil and make a reading and it comes to also 15 thou. That was the exact same value we got with the other probe and that made me really really happy to see that both of them agree to the thickness of the aluminum foil. And from here on it was just more of the same and um, I bumped the wire in one reading. That was just when the probe already sat down and it did make a difference. Actually there was a delta of two microns. I don't think, I think that was actually an error on my side but I nonetheless, I left it in the chart just to include it. So here it is, you see in all 20 measurements, a variation of zero except one for two microns. So I'm definitely looking forward to using that probe. I also liked that both of them, so both designs agreed that the aluminum foil is 15 micrometers or 15 microns thick. I, that was a success for me. Um, the two micrometers set uh, showed uh, the deviation on the metrol unit. I think I bumped that uh, probe on the table and that is why that one reading slipped in there. I think that the metrol switch is actually in the probe is, is more accurate than that. You can get it to read zero every single time. However, once you start moving that probe around on your table, it's pretty amazing because you will find five thousands off um, relatively simple and easily. Okay, I hope you got something out of this video. Uh, if you did, leave me a like and I catch you next time. Take care. Bye.